Hi scholars and families. I hope everyone had a wonderful spring break. I know that I got time to rest and I still miss all of you and can't wait to see you when you're back. So let's get into our read aloud for this week. Today we are going to start Lily's Purple Plastic Purse and I'm so excited because I already had this book so I get to actually read it to you guys. So, remember, we've been talking about characters, and in our story, we know that good readers pay attention to the characters. So remember, characters are animals, people, or things that talk during the story. And characters develop character traits. So, if you remember, we find out character traits by making inferences. And that means that we're using text evidence. So things like the character's thoughts, actions, and words, and our schema. Remember, our schema is a super big word that means what we already know. Today, when we start reading Lily's Purple Plastic Purse by Kevin Hankus, we're going to pay attention to the character Lily. And we're going to see, we're going to take note of Lily's character traits throughout the story to see how Lily changes from the beginning of the story to the end. So today, we're just going to start the story. And then we're going to finish that on Wednesday. So we'll have another video to finish the story. But let's get started reading now. Remember, we're using those inferences um, to figure out how Lily changes from the beginning of the story to the end. Lily's Purple Plastic Purse. This is one of my favorite stories. Lily loved school. She loved pointy pencils. She loved the squeaky chalk. And she loved the way that her boots went clickety clickety click down the long, shiny hallways. See Lily with her boots. Lily loved the privacy of her very own desk. She loved the fish sticks and chocolate milk every Friday at lunch. And most of all, she loved her teacher, Mr. Slingy. Wow, so, so far, I have already learned that Lily loves school and she loves her teacher, Mr. Slinger. So, I know that when people love different things about something, that means that they're passionate about it. So, one of the character traits that I can put for Lily is that she's passionate. Because we read in the story that she loves a bunch of different things about school. And then we know that when someone loves someone, loves something, that they're passionate about. So I use both that tax evidence and my schema. Mr. Slinger was as sharp as a tack. He wore artistic shirts. He wore glasses on a chain around his neck. And he wore a different colored tie for each day of the week. Wow, said Lily. That was just about all she could say. Wow. Instead of greeting students or good morning pupils, Mr. Slinger winked and said, Howdy. He thought that desk and rows were old fashioned and boring. Do you 
rodents think you can handle a semicircle? And you always provided the most tasty snacks. Things that were curly and crunchy and chewy. I want to be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Me too, said her friends, Chester and Wilson and Victor. Oh, so you see Mr. Mr. Slinger and his yummy snacks, all of their friends talking about them wanting to be teachers. At home, Lily pretended to be Mr. Slinger. I am the teacher, she told her baby brother, Julius. Listen up. Lily even wanted her own set of deluxe picture encyclopedias. What's with Lily? Her mother asked. I thought she wanted to be a surgeon or an ambulance driver or a diva, said her father. It must be because of her new teacher, Mr. Slinger, said her mother. Wow, said her father. That was just about all he could say. Wow. So I'm noticing that in this page in the story, Lily's pretending to be like a teacher because she's, you can see that she's pretending with her brother, Julius. And I know that people act like something they like because they're inspired to be like that. So since I see Lily pretending to be a teacher and using my schema that I know people pretend to be like something when they really like it, I'm going to say that I think Lily is inspired. And that's the character trait I would say for Lily. Whenever the students had free time, they were permitted to go to the light bulb lab in the back of the classroom. They expressed their ideas creatively through drawing and writing. Lily went often. She had a lot of ideas. She drew pictures of Mr. Slinger, and she wrote stories about him, too. During sharing time, Lily showed her creations to the entire class. Wow, said Mr. Slinger. That was just about all he could say. Wow. When Mr. Slinger had bus duty, Lily stood in line, even though she didn't ride the bus. Lily raised her hand more than anyone else in class, even if she didn't know the answer. And she volunteered to stay after school to clap erasers. I want to be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Excellent choice, said Mr. Slinger. One Monday morning, Lily came to school especially happy. She had gone shopping with her Grammy over the weekend, and Lily had a new pair of movie star sunglasses complete with glittery diamonds and a chain like Mr. Slinger's. She had three shiny quarters, and best of all, she had a brand new purple plastic purse. And it played a jaunty tune every time it was opened. Lily wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Listen to our story. Lily had a hard time listening. Lily really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Let's be considerate of our classmates. Lily had a hard time trying to be considerate. Lily really, really 
wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Wait until recess or sharing time. But Lily could not wait. So scholars, right now I'm thinking about Lily's actions, thoughts, and words. And we see in the story that Lily keeps asking Mr. Slinger to be able to show her purple plastic purse. And even when Mr. Slinger says no, she continues to ask. So I know that when someone keeps asking a question, even though they were already told no, that means that they might be impatient, especially if they're asked to wait for a different time, like Lily was with her purple plastic purse. Let's keep reading one more page to figure out what else we're going to learn about Lily on this page. Because remember, Lily could not wait. The glasses were so glittery. The quarters were so shiny. And the purse played such nice music. Not to mention how excellent it was for storing school supplies. Look, Lily whispered fiercely. Look, everyone. Look what I've got. Everyone looked, including Mr. Slinger, who was not amused. Okay, so we see that Lily, even though Mr. Slinger told her not to, took out her purple plastic purse and all of her new things to play with. So I know when somebody takes out things and interrupts a teacher, that means they're disruptive. So I know that Lily in the story took out her toys even though Mr. Slinger had asked her not to. And she took it out when there was other things going on that Mr. Slinger needed them to do. So I know that that means Lily's disruptive. So she changed from the beginning of the story to being passionate and inspired to starting to be disruptive and impatient. So that's how she changed from the beginning to the middle. But we're going to keep reading on Wednesday to figure out how Lily changes from the middle to the end of the story. All right, scholars, I had such a fun time actually being able to read this book with you, and I can't wait till we get to read the end of it tomorrow. All right, guys, I'll see you then.